Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is all about thinking about time in midlife. The reason for this topic was inspired by so many of the conversations I've had recently with women like you. In fact, something I noticed really got me thinking about all of it last week. I was at a business building event And I noticed something interesting was happening when women introduced themselves. The women over 50 included mentioning their age. The women 49 years old and under did not. I even did it. So interesting, right? So clearly the women 50 plus were thinking something about their age that led them to decide to include it when they stood up to speak. That's when I knew I needed to devote an episode to how women our age think about the passage of time when it comes to actual age. So think about it. You might be stressed about the passage of time. You might think that time is flying. Or you might feel like time's just going super fast or even spin about the idea that you're running out of time. Any of this sound familiar? Time can be such a big deal at this age. Have you felt this way too? I know that whenever I'm thinking about something, you are too. (laughs) I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not the only one. Now, it's super common, this whole time thing, and we're going to take a look at the whole topic. But first, this episode is sponsored by something new and exciting that's going to be launching soon, and I really want to tell you about it. It's called the Finally First Midlife Membership. Finally First is a life-changing, upbeat, virtual community for midlife women just like you. And you can make this your favorite one-stop shop for all of the midlife coaching, mindfulness, and guidance that you need from me, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified life coach, your coach. And as you may know, I was trained at the life coach school where I'm also an instructor, and I'm super confident about how I can help you create the future you want. Absolutely. You'll also get to connect with an amazing bunch of like-minded women, also like you, who know what it's like to be in a midlife funk and are ready to bust out and get excited about their lives again. The thing is that you don't have to waste time feeling stuck and alone. You really don't. Ask yourself this. Are you ready to say goodbye to feeling stuck? Are you overwhelmed by the whole empty nest thing or even the emptying nest thing? Are you confused about your career? Maybe you've been in your job too long. Are you frustrated by your self-care habits or lack thereof, like exercise or losing weight or maybe even yoga? Are you feeling overwhelmed by caring for your aging parents or maybe even losing a parent recently? Are you motivated to figure out a plan for your future? Are you ready to make yourself a priority? Are you interested in connecting with more midlife women? Are you super ready to finally have some fun? And are you intent on making sure that you don't have regrets? Now, if you said yes to any or all of these, this membership is for you. Here's all you need to do right now. Just get on the VIP waiting list, sign up for updates and launch information there and stay connected so you'll hear about the details first. The Finally First Midlife Membership is here to help you put yourself first and get the midlife support and community that you've been looking for. It's where you need to be, and it won't be the same with you. Seriously, your voice and experience are needed. Your voice and experience are valuable, and it will help other amazing women in the middle for sure. You're totally not alone, and being a woman in the middle can be all about what you can do rather than what you can't do. So let's do this together. Head over to www.susierosenstein.com forward slash membership and sign up for the waitlist now so you're in the loop and don't miss a thing. Okay, so let's dive into this whole topic of time in midlife. It's time, let's do it. So time really does feel different than it used to, right? You are not imagining it. It's very different than when you were a kid. So let's take your birthday. Do you remember what fun the anticipation of your birthday was when you were a little kid? 
As I'm thinking about this, I have a faint memory of playing Pin the Tail and the Donkey when I was about seven or so, grade two, grade three, something like that. The guest list, the cake, wearing a pretty dress, getting fun presents, that's how it was back then. And one more thing, the anticipation. As a kid, it would seem like you would wait and wait and wait for your birthday to come around again. It took so long for this glorious day to happen again. But as an adult, not so much. (laughs) Instead, you might find yourself thinking, wait, didn't we just celebrate my birthday? Time just seems to fly by. Same with vacations. It just flies by. Now, when I hop on calls with prospective clients, one of the most common things they tell me about what they're struggling with is this idea that they're running out of time. The reason that's a problem is that they're not happy, satisfied, or content with where they're at in life. There's a disconnect with what they thought they would be doing at this point in their life versus where they are now. It turns out there's some truth to this experience of feeling like time's passing more quickly than it used to. It might be based on the way you experience new or novel things and how that's different from the way you might experience things that you do more regularly. Now that you're older, you've been doing things for a lot longer, like making dinner, like maybe even being in your current job. For example, think about that first real professional job you had. When I think about it, I remember so many details about it. It was at a place called the East York Health Unit. I was a tobacco use prevention coordinator on a heart health project. It lasted two years and it felt so long, right? When I compare that with the last job I had before I came a life coach, it was 19 years in a publishing department and it feels like it flew by. So that's one thing. There's also research to support that when you're really excited about something in the future, it can make you feel as though time is passing quickly because it will narrow your memory and attention processes. Canadians say process. (laughs) Processes. (laughs) I'm a dual citizen, so sometimes I catch myself saying process. Um, Anyway, I'll just (laughs) review what I said so you don't lose the train of thought here. Like I was saying, there's research to support that when you're really excited about something in the future, it feels like time's passing quickly because it narrows your, your memory and attention process which actually has the result of shutting out extraneous stuff, like all the certain details and things like that. Now, I remember thinking about time when I was an undergrad psychology student at the University of Guelph. I came up with a little experiment where I asked subjects to watch an exciting, fast action, dramatic video clip versus a slower, less exciting video clip, and then estimate how much time passed in each scenario. The subjects thought that the boring clip seemed to last longer when, in fact, they were both the same length of time. As you can see by all of this, the perception of time is fascinating. So what does this all mean for you as a woman in the middle? And I'd like to suggest two main things. The first thing is the importance of living in the moment, really increasing your appreciation of focusing on the present, where you're at, what you're doing. When you put your attention in the future and focus on exciting events and plans in your future calendar, then you may have the tendency to discount the time between now and then. Does that sound familiar? I used to think of it as wishing your life away, wishing for the plans in the future as if they were way more important and valuable than the plans in the present or what you're doing in the present. So this type of thinking is basically dismissing the value of the here and now, the present. And when you do that, you aren't living in the present at all. And time seems like it's totally flying by. Here's a quote by Thomas Stirner that helps explain what I mean. He wrote that book, The Practicing Mind. I refer to it all the time. And he says, keep yourself process oriented. Stay in the present. Make the process the goal and use the overall goal as a rudder to steer your efforts. Be deliberate, have an intention about what you want to accomplish, and be aware of that intention. Doing these things will eliminate the judgments and emotions that come from a product-oriented or results-oriented mind, end quote. So the point here is that when you're not focused on the present, 
you're not as able to appreciate the experience, right? As pleasant, as valuable, as worthy. Like I said, it's kind of like you're wishing your life away to overlook the day-to-day stuff to get to the good stuff, which of course is a thought. (laughs) This is how you're thinking, and this is optional. Focusing more on the present will help keep you feeling like you're slowing things down. The other thing to really consider is your specific thoughts about time to actually catch what you're thinking. Now, this comes up a lot with the women I coach and those in my free Facebook group too, the Women in the Middle community. So if you haven't checked that out, head over there on Facebook, just type in Women in the Middle community. Now, I hear things like this, time's running out, I don't have enough time, time's flying by, there's not enough time left, I won't be able to get it all done. See what I mean? So there are a few aspects about this. First, there's time in general and feeling rushed constantly, being judgmental of yourself constantly, that sort of thing. So what I'm talking about is hours in a day, how you're using your time, and how you think about how you're using that time. That's where the judgment comes in. Now, I'm sure you know what I mean. There seems to be less time and more obligation these days. I think social media has a lot to do with it. Those time tracker apps give you a fascinating look at how much time you spend on Facebook or Instagram, for example. And this is time that could be spent on other things if you would rather doing that, right? Um, But we like to think that all of the modern conveniences we have today will help us simplify our lives. But in reality, we feel more stressed and pressed for time than ever before. Then, if the resulting stress wasn't bad enough, Your inner mean girl probably comes out and you're hard on yourself for what you're not getting done or being more efficient about. This is where this crazy multitasking comes in. And multitasking really doesn't help us be more effective or efficient in the long run. There's major judgment by you for you. Just lovely. We are mean to ourselves. Okay, that's the first thing. But second, there's this feeling that your time on earth is coming to an end that you're literally running out of time. Now, you might find yourself more aware of this than ever before, and it might even be freaking you out. I hear this a lot. Let's take a look at all of this. On the one hand, you're right. Your time is running out. Every day, you're another day older, but it's the way you think about it. This has never changed. From the day you were born, you've been getting older. The only thing that's changed is the way you're thinking about it now and what you're making it all mean. You used to be more prone to thinking about aging in a positive way, about what's to come. I remember thinking about my 21st birthday this way, super excited about my upcoming age. I wasn't having anything negative, uh, no negative thoughts about it. It was just all about how cool it was to finally be that age and what it represented for me, what I made it mean. Or being finally ready to have children or even having enough money to finally buy my first house. All of these milestones have to do with the passage of time. So think about it. What was it for you? What were you excited about? What was the age that you were excited about? Think about that for you. The one that really stands out the most for me is the 21st birthday. It's funny because I live in Canada now and in the States where I grew up, 21 was the big deal. Here it's 19. (laughs) Nobody cares about being 21 here. At least none of my kids did. It's so fun to see the differences. Uh, So anyway, thinking positively about aging now, not so much for women our age, right? Even if you consider yourself pro-aging. I consider myself very pro-aging, but I catch these thoughts sometimes. I really find it interesting. Now, I've been working on this, understanding my thoughts about aging and my age for years. It really started to come up when I turned 50, and then it really even got more serious (laughs) once I started training to be a life coach, and I understood the power of the mind. Before, when I was just in my workaday chaotic spin for 19 years at that last job, I really didn't think about it. It It really was a chaotic blur. But when I got laid off and I turned 50 and my kids left for university, it all started to become obvious that I needed to think about it because my thoughts were not useful at all. 
like I said, I still catch myself thinking an occasional negative thought that brings out an exceptionally negative feeling. For example, when I forget something. So even though (laughs) I work on this stuff constantly, I still catch these thoughts. So when I forget something, my first thought is often, "Uh uh-oh, I hope I just forgot something and this isn't an early sign of Alzheimer's, (laughs) which makes me feel apprehensive. So remember, your thoughts create your feelings, right? And then followed by apprehensive, I might also feel worried. Typically not a useful feeling in my busy day. Now, you're probably also more prone to thinking about aging in a negative way. Like I said, maybe even more than you're aware of, just like me. The years ahead are filled with thoughts about how they will be worse than the years you've already experienced. Often, that is what's going on. The ratio is different, too. You might find yourself thinking that you have less time left than you've lived, where you used to have more, right? Depending on how you think about your lifespan, maybe how old your grandparents are, any of that, like you might automatically think of yourself somewhere on the continuum. And once you pass that middle mark, that ratio changes, whatever the middle is for you. Do you even know what the middle is for you? Do you think about that? Are you aware of what you think about that? So interesting, right? So like I said, you might think, you might find yourself thinking that you have less time left than you've lived, where you used to have more. Or maybe you find yourself focused on physical changes in your body or in general, what you cannot do instead of what you can do. Maybe lost opportunity instead of amazing opportunity. Now, this is no surprise, really. It is quite common. Remember, you are not alone. The thing is that it's not useful for you. It's not helping you in any way. So what's really important is to learn to think on purpose so that you can make sure to manage how you feel about all of this aging stuff and the passage of time. What I mean is the way you're currently allowing these thoughts to float around in your brain without question is making you feel like crap. Now, the good news is that you can rein them in. You can improve the situation. You can take full responsibility for how you feel about aging and the passage of time. So first, notice the actual thought you're thinking. What has the thought been that's been coming up for you while you were listening to this episode? What got triggered for you? Then take a moment and notice how thinking that thought actually makes you feel. Is it a low-lying sense of dread? Is it sadness? Is it fear? Is it something like one of those classic negative emotions? Or is it not like that? I'm very curious about what it is for you. Now, think about what you're likely to do when you find yourself feeling that way. Do you make comments about your memory? Do you focus on what you can't do anymore? Do you stop doing certain things because you're afraid? That's what happened to me with tennis. I had some twinges in my knee and then I had a knee injury and I found that I just started being afraid of getting hurt while playing tennis. So I just stopped. I just stopped. It kind of surprised me. I wasn't really sure what was going on until I started to really look into my brain. (laughs) Now, all of this is clearly related to how you think. And then what happens as a result of this thought loop cycle is that you will end up proving what you think. So if you think you're too old, you'll prove to yourself that you're too old. Your brain looks for evidence to support your thinking. It makes perfect sense that you can do something about this. You can learn to think on purpose so you create the outcomes that you want. So here's what you do. Give yourself a minute to really think about how you want to feel instead of what comes up for you now. Fear, sadness, and dread probably aren't working for you. (laughs) So how would you like to feel instead? I catch myself thinking thoughts like this too sometimes, right? I mentioned that before. I really want you to know that it happens to me too, and I'm on it. It still happens. I've decided I want to feel excited about my future. That's what I want, about the time that I have instead of the time that I don't have. So I want you to think about that too. Once you decide on the feeling you want, I want excited, 
then you need to ask yourself what you could think on purpose to create that feeling for you. And here's a big hint. It's not what you're currently thinking. (laughs) It's different. (laughs) So I want to feel excited about my future. A thought that creates that feeling for me is this. This is only the beginning. That's it. It's that simple thought. This is only the beginning. I really feel that way too. I really, really feel that way. It's such a use, it's such a useful thought. I guess technically I need to say I really think that way. And it genuinely creates that feeling for me of excitement. I'm more creative and more fulfilled than ever before at this point in my life. I even see that there's way more opportunity. So thinking the thought, this is only the beginning, it really does work for me. And you can borrow it. Give it a try. See what it brings up for you. Now, another one I think is actually about empty nest and how old my kids are now. They're in their early 20s. So instead of thinking that my relationship with them is over now that they're older, I like to think this thought instead. My relationship with my kids is changing, but it's still great. My relationship with my kids is changing, but it's still great. Now that thought makes me feel more content, more connected versus that other thought that I definitely noticed myself thinking that like my relationship with the kids was over when they started to go to university. It was very jarring for me and I had to really think about it. So this new thought is much more useful. See what I mean? It's that simple and that challenging (laughs) because you have to be on to yourself. You always have to watch what you're thinking and you have to supervise your brain. When left to your own devices, you will slip, most likely, into those old thought patterns. That's what happens to me. We all will. We're human. That's what happens. It's totally fine. The difference is to be on top of it and not to be at the effect of it without question. So are you in? Are you ready to bring back that youthful aging spirit you had as a kid? Maybe it won't be like that for you again, but for sure it can be better than the way you might be currently thinking. Each day you wake up can be a celebration of life, of the time that you still have. I like to remember to remind myself to think this. We all know so many friends and loved ones who didn't have this privilege. But you, my friend, my amazing woman in the middle, you are here, you are alive, you're listening to this podcast episode, you have birthdays, you have family, you have a life that's just waiting for you to get more creative with, to have more gratitude about. And you know what else? It's finally your time to live it with just as much energy and excitement as when you were younger. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Well, that's it for this episode. My focus as a midlife coach, as your midlife coach, is to help you get excited about your life again. Being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at suzyrosenstein.com. Download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s, at www.suzyrosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. And whenever you're ready, there are three great ways I can help you learn to think on purpose so that you really can move things forward and get excited about your life again this year. The first way is to join the free Women in the Middle community Facebook group and connect with other amazing women in the middle who are ready to start regret-proofing their lives too at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. The second way is to work with me directly and get unbelievably effective coaching to take you from being stuck and confused to being crystal clear and excited about your future. Just grab your free kickstart call at talktosuzy.com. And the third way is to get on the VIP waitlist for my new midlife membership, Finally First. It's an upbeat virtual community for 50 plus women who want clarity, courage, and connection so that they are ready to rock this amazing chapter in their lives. Sign up at suzyrosenstein.com forward slash membership. Let's do this, ladies. Let's think on purpose. Thanks so much for listening, and I will talk to you next week. Take care. Mm-hmm.